I also asked yes. you to go and read back a little bit before you come to the first class. Did you go back and read? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you revised basically the cell part? Yes. Okay, very well. So tell me, um, Iram, how was your, how do you like, how was your biology in class 9th and 10th, the basic fundamentals? How were they? Are they good? Yeah, they were okay. <laughs> Like according, how do you find biology according to you? Easy. 11th class, you have already studied chapter 8 and yeah. 10, right? Cell and cell division, cell cycle and division, right? You have not studied yes. biomolecules in school till now. Okay, so tell me when I say cell, you already are, so you already know you have been introduced to my teaching method. So let's start with some basic discussion first to make a foundation on the top of which we will make some higher concepts. So when I say cell, what do you understand by cell? What is your interpretation of cell? What does Iram knows about cell? Uh, it's basically fundamental uh, and structural unit of life. So you use two words, fundamental and structural unit of life, right? Okay, very good, well enough. So why do you say it is fundamental and why do you say it is structural? Because if I ask you, why, how is cell the structural unit? It isn't it should be the proteins that should be the structural unit of life? Proteins make everything in our body. Even in fact, protein makes cell. And why mm -hmm. fundamental? Why cell, why do we call cell as fundamental? unit of let's let me complete it you said unit of life right so in your sentence only there is a hint for you i just confused you with the question that you know entrances or examinations can also do by asking why are you saying cell is the structural unit why not proteins because protein makes the cell indeed what will be your answer? What do you think? I want you to think like Iram. That's all. The answer is there. Tell me. You gave me this answer. Fundamental and structural unit of life. Why have we given this responsibility, this label to sell? What, what is so special about cell? that is not special about a protein molecule or, or any other molecule or any other thing in biology, living or non-living. What is special with cell? Can you think of it? No. You can think of it. Tell me, um, what is the smallest organism on the planet? the smallest living thing on the planet? What is it? What is the biggest living no, thing on the planet? Okay, what is the biggest living thing on the planet? If I say biggest animal, what is the biggest land animal? What is the biggest? Land animal, an animal that lives on land. Elephant? Yes, African elephant, right? And what is the uh, tallest land animal? Giraffe. Perfect. You know things. Good. What is the largest animal, both land and water combined? Have you heard mm -hmm. of blue, blue whale? Blue whale, yeah. Yes, just blue whale. Yes, blue whale is the largest. Huh? And what is the uh, smallest living thing that you can think of go smallest tell me what is the smallest you can think of smallest cell are you talking about cell i'm asking an organism like a, a a complete living organism a species cell is in our body also let let's say like rbc is there gamete cells are there 
mm-hmm. you know skin cells are there but what is the smallest living system you can think of can you think of so uh, let me start i can think of uh, let's say ants ants are very very small tiny they look like dots can you think of something smaller mm-hmm. than ants microorganisms exactly this, this, yeah yeah what are microorganisms yeah. what are microorganisms here the bacteria oh, yeah. yes exactly yes. what is a bacteria yes and what is a bacteria see you know the answers so, you know you are just yeah. hesitating because the school system has trained you to give right answers and not give wrong answers i will train you the otherwise you have to give all the wrong answers in the classroom to me so when you will be like finished with all the wrong answers that you can give the only answers left with you will be the right ones that you will go and write in the exam so that is my way to teach you have to give all the wrong answers whatever you can give here no hesitation no problem no embarrassment so you and you are giving all the right answers for for that matter you know till now so you said bacteria what is a bacteria it's a, a prokaryotic cell yes it is a prokaryotic cell you told me right yeah so cell bacteria is one single cell isn't it hmm and that is the smallest thing that is alive isn't it mm hmm that's why we call cell as the fundamental and structural unit of life because there is nothing smaller than a cell which can survive on its own or which can be called living or to have life you understand proteins are also sold in dabbas you know that albumin protein whey protein they can be packed in dabbas and can be sold you take one spoon of protein dissolve it in water is it a living system is that protein living no no right that's why protein is not known as the structural unit of life but it is cell because cell is the smallest entity capable of independent existence do you understand and this answer only you gave me by telling me about bacteria so when i asked you what is the smallest thing surviving on the planet you should have said bacteria but instead you said you don't know but i knew that you know so we went through another exercise starting from whale downwards and then without me you only told me bacteria so which means you knew about bacteria right mm-hmm. then why didn't you answer in the first place i didn't know it was the smallest microorganism okay so. <laughs> okay yes because you are correct it is not the smallest the smallest is called pplo these are the smallest living systems on the planet they are the smallest living cells but again they are cells they are single cells the difference between a bacteria and a human is that bacteria is one single cell human is a group of multiple cells living together as one organism okay where different cells go on to form different tissues and different tissues go on to form different organs and different organs go on to form different organ systems and all these systems together make a organism which is human right yes so we are just more evolved that's all but if we go to each and every cell of our body it behaves more or less same like a unicellular organism okay yes sir. okay very good so first to begin with what again the question is what is cell okay so you understand that write down a cell is the smallest living system a cell is the smallest living system capable of first independent existence is 
existence enough you know if something is existing independently is that enough to continue life no there should be functions as well yes right there should be functions to contain to to continue life but apart from that what is what else is important to continue the species to continue that kind of organism there is something called reproduction you know mm -hmm. Yes. What is what is reproduction? Reproduction is producing okay. more. Definition. Yeah. Producing, yeah. producing more. more of the same kind. Same kind. So yeah. So if a bacteria is reproducing, it will produce more bacteria. If a if a monkey is reproducing, the monkey will form more monkeys. If a human is reproducing, we will form more tiny humans. Right. So it is producing offsprings, or uh, you know, babies is not a good word because it's only for humans and mammals. But offsprings is a good word in biology. So reproduction is to produce offsprings that will continue the generation and the species after the parents die. Right? That is also important for a living system. Yes or no? Yes. So bacteria is the sorry. a cell is a smallest living system capable of independent existence and reproducing reproducing to form more cells or this reproduction can also be called as division cell division okay taking here an example of bacteria bacteria is a unicellular organism what does the word unicellular means single cell yes the word uni means single and it is a prokaryote right you only told me this what is a prokaryote pro means old yes uh, karyotic means nucleus Perfect. Yes. So old or primitive, and the word carryon is for nucleus. So prokaryotes have a primitive nucleus. Okay, you can write down. It means a cell, a cell without a well-defined nucleus. Right. Yes or no? yes and well the well defined means no nuclear membrane correct you know so that's bacteria unicellular organism do you know about yeast yes you, what is a yeast uh we use it in uh, baking yes perfect we use yeast in baking that's why it's called baker's yeast what is yeast is it is it unicellular multicellular so is it um multicellular no it is also unicellular unicellular yeah yeast is a single cell okay okay and but the difference between yeast and a bacteria is that yeast is eukaryotic yeast belong to the kingdom fungi you know there are five kingdoms in class il yes in class 11th your first unit is about biological classification so it talks about five kingdoms monera to which bacteria belongs okay the only prokaryotic kingdom then protista then fungi plant and animalia these five are the kingdoms so bacteria belongs to monera yeast belong to fungi both are unicellular but one is prokaryotic and other is eukaryotic the word eu means true okay and again karyotic is with nucleus so eukaryotes are those which have a 
well defined nucleus is it clear iram yes okay yes and the nucleus is double membranous okay in this case nucleus is double membranous so do you see that both of them are single cell a one cell but they can be either prokaryotic or eukaryotic but this these are the simplest living systems both in prokaryote and eukaryote that is capable of independent existence and also capable of reproducing to form more cells or offsprings do you understand this yes okay very good now nothing which is smaller than a cell can exist independently so right right down anything which is less than a cell anything which is less than a cell is not capable of independent existence okay now can you tell me why why do you think this is the case what do we need what do you understand by living this is the question that i ask um, you know 10th class you must have studied life uh, processes remember studying yes, life yes. processes in class 10 yes. there a question comes what is life and how will you say something is living so there are some certain characteristics of life right yes. can you tell me some characteristic features of life which like define life perfect perfect respiration respiration very very good metabolism respiration consciousness about the environment consciousness right that is also yeah, one defining feature exactly. yeah so for all these things whether you said metabolism you said respiration you said consciousness what do we need basically so a life is a special type of environment so you need at least a boundary right we need a boundary which separates the environment from the inner like the inner uh, you can say the outer environment from the inner environment right that is the first thing suppose you want to make a house you want to make a private property so first thing that will do you will you know barrier it right you will make a you will mark it through a fence that this is your property nothing of outside is allowed to enter inside without your permission right yes or no yes yes so this is what a living system also do nothing can enter a living system without that living system's permission otherwise that living system is not living right anything can come in and kill that living system yes so you need a wall to prevent or to protect the internal system from the outside environment and that wall is called membrane so we need a membrane we call it cell membrane yes now do we need to do we need to block everything nothing should come in then also there will be no life right yes because life requires a lot of things from outside what do we need from outside we need oxygen from the environment we need water from outside we need nutrition from outside yes or no and when we uh, when we uh, fall sick we need drugs and medicines from outside yes or no these yes, things are not yes. present in our body so cell also needs to interact with the environment so for that interaction the cell membrane cannot be impermeable it can also not be totally permeable so what it can be something in between which is called semi permeable you must have heard this term semi permeable yes so we need a semi permeable yes. membrane first to distinguish the outer environment 
with the inner environment and what what should be there inside so inside there is a fluid right because outside also there is fluid inside also there is something but what should be the most important thing which should be inside a cell nucleus yes inside the cell there should be a genetic material right now the genetic material can be dna or rna but in this case i am taking it as dna so every cell should have a genetic material and what does genetic material do what what is genetic material you know that any idea do our cells have genetic material inside it yes yes what is DNA. it our our dna right and what does what does our dna do what is the function of a dna it decides everything starting from the color of your eyes to the texture of your hair to the uh, texture of your skin to the color of your skin to your height metabolism everything is decided by genes which are present in the dna right yes. so genetic material basically is the blueprint of life what is a blueprint before making any building or anything we make a blueprint of it right how will it look like yes. what where will be the uh, exit points the entry points where will be the pillars where will be the floor all that planning is done that's called blueprint so genetic material is the blueprint of life semi permeable membrane is to protect that genetic material and apart from that what should be inside side inside should be some organelles like ribosome yeah. ribosome is present in each and every cell whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic we are just talking about a cell here we are not talking about whether it is a prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic cell okay so this is environment inside is called cytoplasm you know that yes and what does ribosome do what is ribosome known as <clears throat> it is called protein synthesis factory remember yes all the protein in the cell is produced by ribosomes yes so we have dna which has the genetic material the blueprint of life we have ribosomes that will make proteins in the cell that protein will help us to repair the cell and survival of the cell everything and we have a cell membrane to protect that cell from the outside environment right so these are the basic fundamentals these should be there for any life form to exist right that's why the smallest thing that can survive on its own is a cell you understand it cannot be a protein it cannot be any other molecule it has to be a cell okay iram you have noted down everything yes. till now yes yes okay now let's go to some history do we did we always know about cell no we don't we, we didn't know that organisms are made up of cells always so who was the first person who figured out um that there is a cell anton von liebig yes so there's one person called anton like you said anton von liebig now what does what does liebig hook did you know who was liebig hook he discovered no i don't know who he discovered a okay. living cell yes and uh, are living cells visible with naked eye no then how do you think he must have discovered it to discover it Under he must have so who discovered the microscope <laughs> he himself so he was he discovered the first magnifying glass or the first uh, or the first microscope for the first functional microscope under which he only observed 
for the first time cells okay anton von leeuwenhoek observed cell for the first time under his own built microscope self built microscope is it clear yes clear yes write down anton von leeuwenhoek first observed first observed when i am saying observed he looked it through the microscope he first observed and described a living cell okay so he discovered the cell and then there was another person called robert brown now he discovered the nucleus okay so anton von leeuwenhoek leeuwenhoek said that cell is like a separate protected uh, compartment okay fundamental unit of life and then robert brown said that within that compartment there is another compartment which is called nucleus where lies the genetic material okay so it is like a vault inside a safe house so you have a house and within your house also you have a vault right where we keep the most precious things of the house yes or no yes so that was nucleus now if he could see nucleus he would have seen it in the eukaryotes right because in prokaryote there is no well defined nucleus yes or no yes yeah obviously now after the discovery of cell for a very long time people were just puzzled okay now there are cells with which every organism is formed but where are cells formed from where did the first cell came from so then came the first biological theory in cell biology known as the cell theory because if you now know about something you would like to ex explore it more right like right because just like we figured out you and me in the class figured out that the smallest thing that can survive on its own is a cell these two scientists also figured out that yes it is the cell and then what is a cell where does a cell come from all the properties of cell that needs to be defined so cell theory was given by write down two people skleden and schwann okay skleden and schwann these two people gave the cell theory and then so write down what did they say write down let's write first few points first write down skleden skleden observed this person skleden observed that all plants all plants are formed of different type of cells he studied a lot of plants in your school also you do this experiment where you take the onion peel out and under the microscope look at the cells of the onion right have you done this yet or not as yes. biology yes yeah so he figured out about plants skleden figured out about plants at around the same time the second person schwann theodor schwann he was so skleden was a botanist who is a botanist who studies plants and schwann was a zoologist who studies animals and schwann said that different types of animal cells are also present
So this was said by Scleden. And this was said by Sean. Different types of animal cells are also present. If you combine these two, what does it mean? What does it mean? That whether it is a plant or an animal, every life form is formed of cells, cells. right? So that together, Scleden and Sean together formulated the cell theory. Now write down. Scleden and Sean together formulated the cell theory, which which says that the bodies of plants and animals are produced, oh sorry, uh, are composed of small compartments called cells. Okay. Do you understand the cell theory? Yes. So, do you think the cell theory has a flaw or is it complete according to you? Does it answers all the questions? It says that every animal and every plant is made up of cells. Now I can ask, how are cells formed, right? How did the first, so if everything is, every body is formed of cells, then where does cell come from? So they could not answer this question, Scleden and Sean. That's why, a third person, third scientist came, whose name was, you remember the name of the third person? Rudolf Virchow. Rudolf Virchow. Yeah. Yes. He came and he filled in the blanks, the dots. He connected the dots. He said that cells divide to give rise to new cells. So every cell came from a pre-existing cell. Right? So, write down. Rudolf Virchow said that cells divide to form new cells because he observed cell division. Now, if you combine all of this together, then the final cell theory was formed. And final cell theory is like this. It has two points. First point given by Scleden and Schwann that says all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells. Right on. All living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells or cell products, okay? And then the second part was given by Rudolf Virchow, which means all cells are formed from pre-existing cells. And this part is known as the way he called it omnis cellula a cellula. Cell comes from cells. You understand the meaning of it? Yes. Yes. So this is the complete cell theory, which consists of two points. Is it clear? You know, you can ask, still it is not clear completely. It talks about cells and it says that cells are from, from pre-existing cells, but still can you ask that where did the first cell came from? Yeah, I just thought about that. You just thought about that? See, you're yeah, a scientist. Yeah. You're already a scientist in making because this is how scientists think. You tell them something, they will not just accept it. They will not be like, Oh, okay. 
now it is the truth and i go home and sleep they will take your fact they will analyze it and they will say wait a minute but you know and that's called curiosity so i told you all living systems are made up of cells then you asked then where where are cells coming from then i told you all cells are formed from pre existing cells and then you said but where did the first cell came from right first cell must have come from somewhere now to explain that that we have to do in evolution part that talks about the evolution of life how did life came into existence so that part i'm just leaving uh, i'll not cover here is it okay i'll just tell you yeah, if no you are very very if you are very very curious you can go back and look at there is a theory theory of a biogenesis this gives an answer that where does the first cell came from okay first living cell is it clear but this yes. i will just leave for the time being because this is enough for us to understand that there are cells and we have to now go and deep deeply understand about cells so this part i will again bring back and that day remember that we had this discussion okay it is your question so we will solve it some day in the future is it clear till here you are on the same page with me yes please keep now let's go to understanding a cell so let's go to a overview or outlook of biological cell now you tell me you know if i if i ask you how many different type of cells do you know how many different type of cells are present in your body let's not go far away let's talk about you and me only are we living systems of course we are at least i believe we are so what kind of cells do you have in your body eukaryotic cells sorry which one eukaryotic uh a what the uh, eukaryotic cells can you spell it e eukaryotic okay eukaryotic yes we are an eukaryotic organism our cell has nucleus i am asking what types of cell do you have in your body in a human body what are the different type of cells do you have let me start with something do you have red blood cells in your body yes yes red blood cells yeah and how do red blood cells how blood red blood how do red blood cells look like they, they are round. do not they are round they do not consist of nucleus yes they do not have nucleus yes and they look something like this right yes yes if you look it from the side they will look broader towards the end thinner towards the middle right mm. yeah this is one type of cells you have in your body other white. if you have red blood cells yes you can also say that you have white blood cells do the white blood cells look similar to the red blood cells no they do not have a shape right Yes. They do not have a fixed shape, at least, and their nucleus also do not have a fixed shape. So they can have various different kinds of nucleus. Yeah. So this is white blood cells. Anything else that you have apart from these? Do you have neurons? in your body yes yes brain nerve cells, cells. Mm. yes sorry you are right nerve cells 
How do nerve cells look like? They are. Um... They have a cell body with a nucleus, and they have long projections, right? Dendrites. Yeah. And they have a long axon. Correct. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. This is how a neuron looks like. It's a long cell. Yeah. Tell me some few more type of cells that you have in your body. Do you have muscle cells in your body? Yeah. How does a muscle cell look like? They are long bundle like long cells, right? Narrow. Yes, they are long bundles. So they look like this. Yes. Long bundle. And what else do we have? Do we have uh, fat cells? Yes. Okay. Let let's let's take example of these four cells. Do you see that all these four cells are similar? Are the same? No. No. What is the difference? Tell me. They are different in shape as well as they yes. have different functions. Yes. Correct. You know everything. So cells can have different shapes, right? They can have different sizes, correct? And is it just the structure that is different? Functions they also have, are yes, they also have different functions in the body. A neuron cell sends message from brain to other parts of the body, right? A muscle cell helps in contraction and relaxation and helps in the movement. White blood cells are the immune cells of our body. They kill pathogens. Red blood cells carry oxygen and so on, right? So if I talk about certain um, cell types, what do you think is common. Now, this is the difference you told me about. But is there something common between a red blood cell, muscle cell, white blood cell, and neurons? Is there something which is common? So my question is, what is common among all cell types? What do you think, Iram? What is common? Um, the... Yes? I couldn't... Just think. All the cells have a cell membrane, right? Yeah. An outer cell membrane. Without which, without this, no cell will be there. Then? All the cells will have a nucleus or nucleoid or genetic material. Red blood cells, when they were forming, they have nucleus. When they develop, they lose their nucleus. Now, it, it has a reason behind it that we will come to later. Okay. It's not like red blood cell was produced without a nucleus. You cannot produce a cell without a nucleus because the information to make proteins, to make the structures of the cell, all that information is there in the nucleus only. So to begin with, every cell needs to have a nucleus. Do you understand? Or nucleoid yes. or genetic material. What else is common? All the cell types have cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, yes. yes. Is there any cell which does not have cytoplasm? Um, no. I don't think so. No. Yes. You cannot have a cell without the cytoplasm because where will be the organelles present then? In the air, what you will fill inside the cell? You cannot fill it with air, right? 
it has to have fluid yes and cytoplasm is the cell fluid so i'll write it and what else right yes cell organelles right yes. good so this is something common between cells now some questions which is the uh, smallest cell now we come to it um mycoplasma yes mycoplasma remember i told you about pplo yes they are these okay mycoplasma and what is the um, largest cell no no very good that's not the largest that's the longest it has an extension but largest cell is a uh, okay tell me when a sexual reproduction happens okay class 10th a sperm fuses with the ovum yes or no mm, yes and what does it forms gametes sperm and ovum are gametes oh, they zygote so, yes gametes fuse to form zygote perfect now that zygote is a single cell or it is a multi cell they are it's many cells i think many cells it is a single cell because single? one sperm fuses with one ovum and forms one zygote which is a single cell it is diploid it has two set of genomes but the cell is single okay yes baby is formed from that zygote right yeah zygote in case baby. of yes in case of humans what happens in case of birds what is formed from zygote egg remember egg 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 that you eat chicken egg Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Egg is basically a zygote, right? Sorry, egg is basically a, a gamete, right? Yes. Which fuses with sperm to give rise to a zygote, correct or no? Yes. So the largest cell is egg. How big is an egg? This big, right? Yeah, that much. Yes. And which bird has the largest egg? Ostrich. Yes. 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 See, you know everything. It was just a egg. guess. Yeah, you are correct. Egg of an ostrich is the largest cell present on the planet Earth right now. Okay. Is it clear, Hiram? Yes, clear. Smallest is mycoplasma. Largest is egg of an ostrich. is okay. mycoplasma bacteria mycoplasma is even smaller than bacteria they are not bacteria they are even smaller than bacteria that's why they are called mycoplasma okay yes okay now in human in human so this is in general now if i ask you largest cell in um human now can you tell me egg cells perfect egg cell or we call it ovum right yes so no yeah and if i ask you the longest cell no sir yes neurons nerve cell perfect you know how long can be a nerve nerve cell 
from the from your spine where is the spinal cord at the center of the back right yes from the spinal cord to the tip of our finger there is a single axon bundle going so these are thousands of axon but it's one single axon going from the spinal cord to the tip now try to like um, open your hand completely open your arm completely and look how long it is how long it is more than a foot right yes more than a foot right easily mm -hmm. so that long is your neuron in your body and the same thing happens with the leg your hand is longer or your leg is longer leg yes so from that spinal cord to the tip of your toe there is one single axon going so this is the length of the longest so is it nerve kept like that inside the body yes let me tell you how it happens it's very interesting so in neuron like i told you see this part of the neuron is called cell body what is called cell body okay are you there yes these parts are called dendrites and this long thing is called axon okay in a neuron now let's make a human just a humanoid structure so let's say this is the arm of a human i'm very wrong, not good with drawing so forgive me for that let's say this is a human arm and so you have brain right here and yes. from that brain arises the spinal cord correct hmm. yeah. now inside the spinal cord all the cell bodies are there okay and then the axons come out from the cell body and every axon goes all the way to the fingertip so there are thousands of axon going but it is basically one cell right one this is the cell body and the dendrite and this is the axon so from here to here it is the length of one neuron right do you understand yes, no breaks yes. in no break in between mm -hmm. interesting or not you can see in your fingers and to you can see in where in your uh, wrist wrist in yeah, the wrist slightly. no that what you can see is a blood vessel i am talking about oh, nerves okay. here blood vessels are different from nerve cells okay these are very thin bundles which helps us to feel everything okay we can feel through nerve cells is it clear yes clear okay perfect now <clears throat> talking about cells let's now go into studying some so character yes thing. you know yes you know. so what would be the uh, the smallest cell what will the smallest cell in human body or in human general body, human body in the human body so there are like you <laughs> in the human body i think we don't know basically like if we know any cell i'll get back to you with this actually in human body the smallest kind of cells are those which are present in the inner inner layers of any organ like you know kidney or ovaries or testes you, see, you know inside those there are very very small cells which have a lot of different functions is it clear Mm, yes mm. but uh, no human cell can be smaller than a bacteria every human cell will be bigger than that because it's a eukaryotic cell it has more energy it can grow bigger and that's why every cell of our body can be attacked by the bacteria we can have bacterial infection if our cells were smaller than bacteria then bacteria would not have been able to enter the cell no Yes. then we will never we will never had the bacterial infection 
so what i can tell you is that smallest cell in the human body is also very big okay is it is it okay you know yes okay okay so now let's come to understanding a prokaryotic cell versus eukaryotic cell okay now write down prokaryotic cell includes bacteria uh bga blue green algae now their name is algae but they are not algae because algae are plants okay remember this name is misleading it is not a algae it is a cyanobacteria okay iram blue green algae yes. is actually a cyanobacteria it is not an algae what is a cyanobacteria it is a bacteria which has blue or green color in it so often people think that this green color is coming from chlorophyll and hence it is an algae you know algae are the uh, simplest plants unicellular plants okay yes then comes mycoplasma and pplo pplo is called pleuro pneumonia like organisms pleuro pneumonia like organisms in short they are called pplo they are also among the smallest of the cells with mycoplasma okay yes and if we talk about eukaryotic cells then in this comes your yeast which is a baker's yeast your algae you know the uh, body cells of human or plant cells okay these are all eukaryotic cells clear so fungi is a bacterial cell right no fungi is eukaryotic yeast fungi so eukaryotic. yeah so before i move forward i think i should tell you this because this is the first chapter um in five kingdom classification the five kingdoms are first is monera okay which is a unicellular prokaryotic so every member of monera is unicellular and prokaryotic okay and you will know example here as bacteria bacteria is one example of this okay then second is protista are you following iram yes yes protista are what eukaryote or prokaryote they are also unicellular but eukaryote okay here your examples will be protozoa all the plasmodium let's say plasmodium causes malaria you know that yeah you know amoeba yes binary fish yes it comes into protista then the third kingdom is fungi so do you know that now you understand fungi is different from bacteria and prokaryotes it is the third kingdom fungi is mostly multicellular and eukaryotic but the only exception where there is a unicellular fungi is yeast okay all other fungi are multicellular you know mushroom is also a fungi 
the yes. mushroom that we that we eat is also a fungi so it's multicellular and eukaryotic example is mushroom you can write here that yeast is an exception it is the only unicellular fungi and then fourth is kingdom plant plants are always multicellular right yes and they are also eukaryotic give any example let's say rose plant okay and the fifth kingdom is animalia where we are are we multicellular yes we are also multicellular and eukaryotic and the example is cats humans etc okay yes how do we pronounce the fifth one oh well an animalia or animal kingdom animalia or animal okay plantae fungi protista and monera so is this clear to you just as a concept yes it's clear yeah now coming back to prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cell so i will be um, giving you a homework here so write down you have to do it and you have to show it in the next class okay you you are added to the group no no there is not a so i'll ask you i'll ask that you should be added to a group okay and on that group you can just click picture and send me when you when i require your homework or want okay. to see something it's a whatsapp group so you have to draw a neat and well labeled this you have done in class 10th already remember in class 12th you draw a bacteria cell versus a, a eukaryotic cell also you did plant versus animal cell in 10th yes you studied about prokaryote and eukaryote right no i guess it's in 9th oh 9th yeah then it's 9th right 9th yeah because it's coming back in 11 so it was 9 so you studied you remember making different type yes, of cell yes. diagrams yes so you have to draw a neat and well labeled diagram of prokaryotes versus eukaryotes okay iram i'll tell you why i'm giving okay. you this homework when you will come with this drawing in the next class we'll discuss certain aspects of this okay sure So now talking about the prokaryotic cell you know that prokaryotic cells do have a membrane but they do not have a well defined nucleus right they also write down yes. some points write down some points on the basis of which you will make the diagram write down some points prokaryotes prokaryotes have a cell wall prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane surrounding the cell membrane okay so they have a cell membrane they have a cell wall also as additional protection they have no well defined nucleus so there is no well defined nucleus keep writing these points on this basis you will draw your diagram okay you know yes they have they do not have a well defined nucleus so the dna the dna lies naked in the cell in a dense region called nucleoid so the dna lies naked in the cell in the cytoplasm in a dense region called nucleoid okay all right done prokaryotes 
prokaryotes have non membranous organelles non membranous which do not have membranes non membranous organelles are present in prokaryotes for example ribosomes remember i told you ribosome is present in every cell yep and prokaryotes do not have any membrane bound organelle they do not have any membrane bound organelle okay yes good so then we'll study about bacteria separately when once you will come with this diagram then we'll study about the bacteria separately okay i'll take bacteria then now coming to eukaryotic cell because you have to draw both right prokaryotic and eukaryotic so also let's discuss a little bit of eukaryotic cell what are the points that you have to take care when you are drawing a eukaryotic cell write down eukaryotic cells contains membrane bound organelles along with ribosomes eukaryotic cells contains membrane bound organelles along with ribosomes now can you give me an example of any membrane bound organelle that you studied in class 9th uh, mitochondria perfect mitochondria ribosomes. no ribosomes do not have a membrane that's why they are present okay. in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes mitochondria nucleus golgi bodies and endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum, reticulum. Mm -hmm. yes right down so eukaryotic cells have all of this and next point are done the genetic material of eukaryotic cell the genetic material of eukaryotic cell is well organized is well organized inside the nucleus inside the nucleus into chromosomes you know chromosomes yes what are chromosomes tell me tell me what are chromosomes what do you what do you know about chromosomes in the bacteria there is only one dna thread okay a, a single if you make it into a chromosome it will be a single chromosome but in case of bacteria the dna is just lying naked in the nucleoid a dense region in the cytoplasm known as nucleoid is it clear yes yeah whereas in the eukaryotic cell within the nucleus there are many dna threads not one how many chromosomes humans have you know do you have any idea yes. how many yes. sorry i know it but i can't recall 46 chromosomes we have 46, yeah, 46 chromosomes 46 you know chromosomes. yeah, yeah. now 46 chromosomes means there were 46 dna threads that got condensed into chromosome right so 46 chromosomes have to be arranged right otherwise yeah, in 23 will... pairs yes in 23 pairs perfect otherwise you will not be able to keep all that genetic material in a arranged manner right so this part you will do okay then we will discuss this in the next class 
now i am moving forward to start with the first outermost layer of every cell which is cell membrane cell membrane is present in every cell right there is no cell without a cell membrane cell wall can be or cannot be present but cell membrane has to be present you understand that yes yes so write down uh cell membrane it is a vital structure present in every living cell this is the first membrane that covers the cell and separates it from the surroundings right the cytoplasm is kept separate from the surrounding and remember when we discussed we also discussed that because it cannot say no to everything it can also not say yes to everything that enters inside or goes outside so what kind of what will be the property of a cell membrane it will not be totally permeable it will not be non permeable so what will it be semi permeable yes so write down cell membrane is semi permeable because this is very important you have to be you know dynamic you have to adjust to situations the cell needs to adjust to situations also sometimes uh, the cell needs to get something from outside and sometimes the cell needs to excrete out waste material right so things should come in and come and go out but that should be regulated like a checkpoint okay so you know that what is coming in and what is going out is it clear yes it's clear do you know there is another name for cell membrane have you heard of it or read of it in any books <clears throat> there is another word which is used for cell membrane Does you know what is it start from g it starts from p it's called plasma membrane Have you read of this term, plasma membrane? Yes, yes, I have read. Now you tell me, Iram, what does the word plasma means? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm has the word plasm. What does the word plasm in cytoplasm means? Uh, liquid. Yes, fluid. Okay, yeah, so write fluid, down. Sorry. Have you have you made a copy? for biology yeah i'm writing in a copy yeah yes and uh, i ask you to leave first or the last page is empty right did you do that if you have not left the first then in the last pages write down this terminology the word plasm or plasma means fluid so in a way what does it becomes cell membrane is a fluid membrane yes it behaves like a fluid it does not behaves like a rigid wall so the walls of our house are rigid nothing can go in and out of it if you do not make a window in it right yes or no but yes, here yes. the whole membrane is actually acting like a fluid okay it's not rigid so let's first figure out what it is made up of so write down plasma membrane or cell membrane is mainly composed of lipids and proteins so these two things are there lipid and protein mostly lipids some amount of protein okay and write down it it behaves like a fluid membrane
it behaves like a dynamic fluid membrane. Okay, it can it can break and again form up. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, now this is a lipid molecule. Okay. Lipids and, and fats are the same. I'll tell you. And this will be protein. Let's say. Okay. Now we will try to make a plasma membrane. You ask lipids and fats are same. Fats. Lipids are a kind of fats. There are different kind of fats molecules. All the fats are not lipids. Okay. So lipid is a special kind of a fat molecule, fatty acid molecule. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. When we will come to biomolecules, which is the next chapter, but I will take it after cell division. Then I will tell you the uh, exact difference between different kind of fat molecules and different kind of protein molecules okay now plasma membrane is called a lipid bilayer membrane what it is called lipid bilayer so let me draw it here so what happens in this is there are lipids okay and in a lipid let's first draw this this is called the head okay and the head of a lipid is basically hydrophilic the word philic means write down in your terminology section the word philic or philia means liking hydrophilic means hydro means the word hydro means Hydro power projects, water. hydro, yes, water. So hydrophilic means water loving, that likes the water. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. And this is a tail, this is the tail of the lipid. Now tails are hydrophobic. What does this mean? Phobic or phobia means? Not loving. Fear. Fear. Yeah. You know? Hydrophobia. It is a symptom that happens in many patients. Hydrophobia means fear of? Water. Water. Okay. Yes. Very good. So the tail is hydrophobic and the head is hydrophilic. So these head molecules are arranged like this and from them the tail molecules are towards the center Excuse me. Did you see this? What I'm drawing right now? Here? I'll tell you why I'm leaving this gap. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this happens on the why it is called a lipid bilayer because on the other side also there are similar head molecules you understand yes and they also have their tails towards the insides Now, can you think why the tails are towards inside and heads are towards outside? Any idea in your head? 
theorem logically. Any idea? It can be wrong also, no problem. Right? So this is the kind of arrangement which is present there. Okay. Now, what is towards this side? What is here? The environment, right? Let's say the organism lives in water. So outside is the water. And what is inside? Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, right? Now, sometimes there are proteins which are also present in this membrane, okay? So this is lipid bilayer. And these are proteins. Membrane proteins, okay? Now, as you can see, some proteins are uh, only at the periphery, they do not penetrate throughout, right? So they are called peripheral proteins. What are they called? Which only are towards one side. Do you understand? Now these protein structures, which are present on the outside, and goes all the way towards the inside. So at one side, they are in contact with cytoplasm and on the other side, they are in contact with the environment. So these type of proteins are known as integral proteins. You understand, Iram? Yes. yes. Because they integrate, they integrate throughout the membrane. They come from one side and they go out from the other side completely and they are only on the periphery so they are called peripheral proteins okay and this whole model is known as the fluid mosaic model what it is called so this lipid is called phospholipid so this is phospholipid bilayer then there are integral proteins on the top of these proteins, sometimes there are sugars present. So you can see that there are sugars which act as receptors. They have different functions. Don't worry about that. They are present. And this whole model of plasma membrane is called fluid mosaic model. Is it clear to you? Yes, clear. Now, please draw this. Take two minutes, draw this, and then I'll uh, discuss about the what is a fluid mosaic model. Okay, I'll be back in two so, minutes. I'll get some water. Yes. For okay, yes. please finish the diagram.
<clears throat> okay, Kiram, are you there? Yes. Ron? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. So you understood this is the overall structure of the plasma membrane. And in a plasma membrane, there are two layers of phospholipid. So it's called phospholipid bilayer. And there are proteins which can either be peripheral, only embedded towards one side, or integral, which goes from one side to the other side totally. Okay. And they have sugars on them. Okay. So this membrane is responsible for maintaining environment different from cytoplasm. Okay, so what will go out and what will come in is all regulated by plasma membrane. It is the most important organ from that perspective. Now, the best uh, plasma membrane was best explained through fluid mosaic model. So let's study about this model right now. Fluid mosaic model is the widely accepted fluid mosaic model. is the widely accepted. What does this word say? Fluid mosaic model. It says, see, just understand. It just says that plasma membrane behaves like a fluid membrane. For example, have you ever, um, 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 what should be a good example? Have you ever, you must have encountered the milk packets that come, right? Yes. So when you touch that milk packet, you know that inside it, fluid is filled, right? We don't have it over here, but when we go to India, we usually see this. Yes. So if you touch that milk packet, it is sealed. Inside there is cytoplasm. Let's see that milk packet as a cell. So you see that the packet actually is not something hard. It is, it is just, you know, fluid. Soft, yeah. yeah, it's very soft. And uh, it has to be very strong because blood, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, milk should not leak out but in case of cells if you poke something inside it will easily go inside right mm -hmm. yeah but imagine if uh, imagine the other case where the milk come in carton packs tetra packs yes yeah, that you get do you get that yeah in your place? Over here, it's like that yeah carton right so carton packing is more rigid packing right mm. You, if you poke with your finger, it will not go inside. Correct? Yes. Whereas that, that plastic packets are like more fluid membrane packets. Okay? So that is what a cell is like. A cell is like squishy substance. Jelly-like. Okay? It's not rigid. So fluid mosaic model was proposed by and they get and they got Nobel Prize for this. Okay? Stick good and was proposed by Singer and Nicholson. Singer and Nicholson. Okay, in 1972. So it's not very far back in time. We just knew about the <laughs> cell, very about the membrane of the cell, you know, very recently. In the in the late 20th century only, right? 1970s. No, our parents are older than this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's just one generation has passed since we have known about the plasma membrane of the cell. And from there, today, we have all sorts of medicines that work on cell and we have antibiotics, we have everything, right? Mm -hmm. That works. So it was proposed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. And right down, this model states that This model states that the, the quasi fluid nature, the word quasi means stable. Okay. Quasi means something which is happening very, very slow. For example, uh, if I, uh, if I say that water is a fluid, you will agree. Yes. Yes. If I say milk is a fluid, you will agree? Yes. If I say honey is a fluid, you will agree? Yes. Yes. But now between all these three fluids, if I 
pour one liter water, one liter milk, and one liter honey, will they all all flow with the same speed? No. No. Why? Because they have different density. Exactly. Perfect. So the lipid membranes, which are, which are like fat molecules, a kind of fat molecules. they also behave like quasi fluid in nature okay so they flow are you a non vegetarian can yeah. give you one another good example so sometimes with with the with the meat with the flesh of the animal you will see that the fat of that animal is also there mm -hmm. yeah yeah what i'm trying to say if you uh, if you have no inhibition touching the raw flesh you try to touch the flesh which is the muscle okay the red part of the meat mm -hmm. and the yellowish whitish part which is the fat when yeah. you touch both of them you will figure out that one thing is very very slimy and fluidic it's like if you try to hold it tightly it will just get out of your hand yes yes, yes. it's very slippery. slippery that's called yeah that's called quasi fluid nature all the lipids in nature whether it is the mucus in our body so mucus is present in all the linings of our body you know that mucus is present in the nose in the mouth cavity in the esophagus in the small intestine large intestine everywhere yeah so that mucus is also slippery right because that is also a kind of lipid yes, understand that so write down this model states that the quasi fluid nature of lipid molecules of lipid molecules allows the lateral movement allows the lateral movement of proteins proteins within the bilayer within the bilayer okay what i mean to say is look here i told you there are proteins right yes now if this was something rigid then this protein always throughout the life will be here only imagine a wall and in a wall if you put a nail or you put a painting there does that painting changes its position in the wall mm -hmm. no because it's rigid it is fixed right yes but these protein molecules are not fixed they change their position so this molecule can travel here and come to this part this part this molecule can also travel or this side or this side and come to some other region so because these lipid molecules which are making the bilayer they are very very fluid things can easily move within it because as if like they are slipping through it you understand mm -hmm. yes yes so this proves that the plasma membrane is not something rigid it is something very fluid and proteins which are present in it can actually change positions and can move from one place to another so that is called and that happens because of the quasi fluid nature or semi fluid nature of the lipid molecules okay so remember this word this is important do you understand iram is it easy to understand or do you find it difficult now easy easy yes now this ability write down the last point this ability to move within the membrane this ability to move within the membrane is called the fluidity of the membrane okay yes so if you have to measure the fluidity of a membrane you will measure how easily any protein present in that membrane or embedded in that membrane can change its position and can move from one place to another okay make sense yes yes very good uh now what is the why is this fluid now my question is 
This is also a board's question. Write down. It has come in CBSC. Why is fluid nature of plasma membrane important? Why is fluid mosaic nature of plasma membrane important? Now, can you think, Iram, why why it being fluidic is important? Why it cannot be rigid like a wall of our house? If it is rigid, there is one benefit. It will give a lot of protection, right? Yes. And someone will come with a knife and will try to poke you with a knife. Knife will not go inside because our cell membranes are rigid, titanium, let's say, or concrete based. Will it be good? Do you think it, is, it will be good? No. No, why? Why? Do you know that living cells divide, grow in size, migrate yes. from one place to another, change shape? Have you seen amoeba changing shape, at least in books? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So believe, imagine that this lipid membrane, this uh, plasma membrane yeah. was rigid. Yeah, it won't grow. You, yeah, it will not grow, first of all, because the our house do not grow because our house walls are concrete, right? Yes. And if it is concrete, it will also not change shape on its own. So amoeba will not be able to change shape like a, you know, like a fluidic things. When amoeba changes shape or when the RBCs changes shape, sorry, when the WBCs changes shape in our body, they do it very smoothly, right? As if they are just jelly. Have you seen jelly? Jelly can change any shape, right? So this is why fluid mosaic nature is very important. Otherwise, the cell will not divide, the cell will not grow, the cell will not change shape, the cell will not migrate from one place to another, and living system will not survive. Okay? okay. Yeah, so write down. The fluid nature of the membrane is important. The fluid nature of the membrane is important for for functions like for functions like cell growth Cell division. You see very easily a big cell, which is round, just pinches from the center and divides into two, right? All this is possible because the membrane is fluid. Yeah. Cell division. Third is endocytosis. We will study about this in detail. Endocytosis. Endocytosis is when, have you seen amoeba forming two projections? Yes, yes. Two daughter cells. And, no, 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 no. Amoeba is moving. And then it saw food. Then amoeba will send these two projections. Yeah, engulfing exactly. Yes, yes that's called endocytosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. So endocytosis for um, formation of cellular junctions connections, formation of cellular junctions, etc. So these are the four most important. Junctions are where one cell, so this is one neuron. Okay, it has one exon. And now this exon will form a junction with another neuron. You understand? Oh, connecting this. Yes. So when two cells form a connection, that's called a junction. Yes. And these junctions are also able to be formed because the cell is fluid, because you have to know what kind of change in the shape you have to do, right? Yes. 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 And apart from this, you can also write fifth as secretions. Cells secrete, right? Yes. 
whatever they secrete this they are able to secrete because things can move out from the cell membrane is it clear iram yes clear so uh, the next topic is a little longer so i will not start it today i will end here so what we learned today basically was the fundamental of the cell and something basic going into the details of plasma membrane i hope you like this teaching methodology it's working right we are discussing we are learning right you know yes yes working working for you cool so we studied the fundamental and one more thing uh, i have to tell you in every class of mine because this was the first class from next class onwards before i begin the class you will ask me doubts if you have any if you have no doubts then you will give me a recap of the last class you and other batchmates of yours who will join i randomly pick anyone to give a recap of the last class okay, okay. so before you come to the next class please revise whatever we have studied today sure.